Lords of War, Orcs vs. Dwarves, Volume 1. Written by Martin Vaux and read by Tom Barrett. Part 9. The Element of Surprise. Dawn arrived and with it came the screams of the spider riders. The goblins on their backs whipped and corralled but struggled to maintain control of the willful beasts. Few of the spiders had ever ventured outside of the caves they called home. They were strangers to sunlight and to all the colours of the world, from the blue of the skies to the lush, verdant greens of the grass their trampling destroyed. Alongside them, waddling onwards, were the war hogs. They grunted and squealed, emitting pitiful, painful-sounding wails. When the menagerie reached the edge of the deep forest, they found Gonky Longtooth there to meet them. "'Welcome, wretches!' he said, smiling. "'Today we march to war!' The spider riders bucked and reared, and the war hogs poured at the earth, sinking their savage tusks into the cold, wet ground of the new day. Gonki turned his back on the reinforcements and marched deeper into the thick mess of trees. As he strode, he passed the crude catapults that had been hastily constructed during the previous day. There weren't many, thought the general, but there ought to be enough. They had surprise on their side after all. Arriving at the clearing where he had almost duelled with the flesh ripper the night before, he saw, all about the space, orcs and goblins lying exhausted from their merriments. They slept, thunderous snores oozing out of them and echoing through the forest. Wake up, he growled, and prepare your filthy mouths for the taste of dwarf. The orcs and goblins of Gonki's company began to stir. They had rioted into the early hours, driven to a frenzy by the bloodlust, hunger and promise of slaughter. When they had collapsed into slumber, the troop had done so in small groups, huddling together for warmth. For many of them they had not rested in days, some of them weeks, and with their battles so soon to begin they knew that they would not be able to rest again until either the warring was done or the pallor of death had fallen over them. The troops were rousing too slowly for Gonki's tastes, however. The arrival of the spider riders had come with such a fanfare of animalistic sound that any dwarf in half a day's march would have heard them. They needed to move if they expected to be breathing come sundown. Taking one of the still-lit torches, Gonki walked beyond the small clearing to the space where splintered wood had been tossed. These boughs too small, or which had no use as part of a catapult, collectively made a fine mound of kindling. Gonki kicked the mound of wood, sending it spinning about the forest floor. Then, from within his armour, he pulled a small flask, part fashioned from the skull of a long-dead goblin. Turning the skull over, he could see that the cavity where the brain had once sat had been sealed over with wax. He cracked the wax open with the long, twisted nail of his thumb and tipped the contents of the skull onto the kindling, walking about the area as he did so. From the base of the skull flask fell what might look to any normal orc like finely ground black earth, but Gonki knew different. He had found barrels of this strange substance on that pirate ship years ago. Fire sand, he called it. Gonki took two more of the old goblin skulls from under his armour, unhooking them and tossing them into the nearby undergrowth. If you ain't up, the old general shouted over his shoulder, then if I was you, I'd get up now and start running. From the clearing, a chorus of groans and murmurs floated up and away, mingling in the morning air, itself blended with the noxious strains of steaming morning flatulence. In spite of all the warnings, the bulk of the force seemed not to be moving. Very well, muttered Gonki under his breath. He tossed the flaming torch onto the mixture of kindling and fire sand, and within seconds the floor of the deep forest was ablaze. Calmly and confidently, the old general walked back into the clearing, to where the panicked orcs and goblins were struggling to their feet, fiddling with their loincloths and beginning to make their way through the trees. Positions, boys! Donkey barked, the fire rising behind him. He was surprised that in spite of the near-constant rain that seemed to fall on this accursed part of the world, there was more than enough dry wood for the fire to spread to. As he strode onwards, deer and squirrels bounded past him, fleeing the smoke and the heat. Deeper into the forest he could hear the groan of bears and still larger, more terrifying beasts. By the time he was back alongside the catapults, 
Orcs and their goblin helpers had taken up the ropes they needed to drag the contraptions to battle. Heave! ordered Gonki. The response was a deafening bark-like roar. The ropes snapped tight, and the wheels of the catapults began to spin, grinding into the earth before catching and jerking the enormous frames forwards. Gonki walked on. Out in the sunlight of the fresh day, the assembled force looked decidedly menacing, and that was a boon to his spirits. If he was going to die that day, he thought to himself that it might well be in truly ugly company. "'Quick march, boys,' said Gonki. "'Follow my lead.' The aged orc began to run at a light pace, no point in leaving behind the slower troops, he thought. As he ran, he spoke to his force, such as they were. Remember, you orcs, you goblins, he said, that our enemy is weak, our enemy is fat, our enemy is lazy. Dwarves used to be a fighting people, but they ain't no more. They're beat. As he ran, the shapes of his commanders became discernible at his heel. Cragdish Blackmore, Snafu Bighorn, Irugor Bloodfist, Ugluk Horsekiller, and Vanak Fleshripper. So today, continued Gonki, we're going to remind these filthy dirt eaters what war is. We're going to make them feel pain again, make them remember what it's like to have your bones broken, to get a sword through you to bleed. The army was marching in time now, barefoot and booted feet pounded earth with a vicious rhythm. We might find them in their beds. We might find them on the walls, thinking they're ready to defend their piddly fort and their homes. But they aren't. Are they, boys? A roar was a response. No, they aren't, said the general, smiling. But then he noticed something he hadn't expected to see. If anything, it was a signal that for all his planning he had made significant, fatal errors. Marching towards them, across the open fields of the grasslands before them, came another army. Only this was an army made up of dwarves. Gonki turned and looked back at the deep forest, which continued to burn gently. The fire had yet to truly catch, and although the rising smoke was beginning to block the sun, there was no way that from such a distance the dwarves had been able to see it, not from their fort. Still, what was there left to do but fight? And what did his army want more than to fight, to kill, to die? The answer was, of course, nothing. Well, well, shouted the general to his assembled mob. Here comes breakfast. Hoots and hollers sounded out around him but inside he was scared. With few options available to him, he drew his swords and began to sprint towards the battle. In doing so, he knew he would start a war. Dwarves would come out from their mountains and battle with orcs on the open plains, and in time, orcs would rise to the challenge and seize those mountains as their own. For now, it fell to him to light the fuse of the bomb that would change the face of Galt. For Orcus! screamed Gonki, and with that it all began.